I'm sure you've seen people ice bathing on the internet all over social media. If you've ever heard of the Uberman podcast, then for sure you know about ice bath. But do you wonder what the f is actually going on? Why are people doing the ice bath thing? Did you even try it yourself already? And is this only one of the fats you should be talking about? What about the raw liver? What about people eating raw liver on social media like the liver king or all these liver supplements? What is up there? If you're asking yourself what happened and if humanity now finally went completely nuts, then please keep watching this video video to the end. I will explain you both of these hypes. I will explain you what they're good for. I explain you where they come from and if you should be doing them or if there's alternatives. Also, at the end of the video, you will understand why I mentioned both of them because they have very common patterns that I've been seeing all over social media and it's important for you to understand what the hell is going on here. The content presented here is all fake news. So let's start with the ice bathing. Ice bathing arguably was popularized by Dr. Huberman. Props to him. He has a huge following and he made the science behind ice bathing really fascinating. Honestly, if you watch that podcast episode, then afterwards you will be like, oh man, I need to ice bath. Ice bathing will cure my life and change my life forever. He made the science really placative and that's what he's good at. And just a little side note, Huberman also has some incentives for the things he's selling. The one thing I really disagree with him is promoting Athletic Greens, AG1. AG1, honestly, from an ingredients point of view is complete and utter bullocks. You get one gram of 100 different ingredients in random dosages. They don't even disclose the amount of dosages and you pay 100 bucks a month for that. So Athletic Greens, you will never sponsor me and I don't give a f honestly. Complete bullshit and I don't like that he is supporting these things. So it started with Uberman, the whole social media trend and there's people that tried it out and if you've ever done it, the first thing that you will notice is you will be overcoming a fear if you're going in an ice cold bath. I'm defining ice bathing here as going into a bathtub or a sea or whatever that is below four or five degrees or so really really cold what you notice is you will immediately have this fear and you will overcome this fear if you go inside initially which will be an accomplishment and which is the first positive i would like to mention about ice bathing you're overcoming this fear then afterwards when you're in that ice bath for those of you who've never done that you will start being in a shock situation you will body will be like what is going on now i'm freezing this is a life or death experience after like 30 seconds you start to get used to it now it's easier especially if you're able to control your mind control your brain then you can stay in that ice bath for longer and then when you go out you feel incredible it's like a high it's like a strong drug kicking in that's kind of the ice bathing experience right and from a first glance you could think okay now two great things happened i have overcome my fears which is good mental resilience is always great for being healthy in life and the second good part is that sorry for putting the stinky there the second good part is that you get this endorphin rush that you get this immune response there's definitely something happening there right let's look at the positives what does the science actually say is it actually good for us most of the studies on ice bathing have been done on athletes and that's the only population where it really was studied in comparison to normies normal people npcs everybody else and what these athletes always experience is that the muscle recovery muscle soreness parameters they are vastly reduced so they recover a lot faster. That's one of the tricks from the Russians, by the way, for the Olympic Games. They always use these ice chambers. If you use them after sports, minus 160 degrees, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's damn as cold. If you use that, then your body will recover a lot faster. So for recovery, if you're an athlete, ice bathing or ice shock cold therapy, cryotherapy is amazing to do for sure. And there are signs behind it all damn well. But if you now look at average people, if you look at you and me and everybody else. There's not so much science going on there. We know kind of what happens. We know that it's a massive stressor. We know that initially when you go on that ice bath, you start to release huge amounts of endorphins. That's kind of the first good part about it, right? The recovery from exercise. The second good part, and I already talked about this, is more on a mental level of overcoming fear, overcoming anxiety. So this is also something that ice bathing and any extreme hypothermia or any extreme reaction situation is great for. And I don't want to talk that down. I think that's fantastic for people. 
Additionally, you will get some pain relief from the local cold reaction. Your body will reduce pain if you're experiencing that. But honestly, that's most of it. Like that's most of the proven benefits you get. There are some speculations about it being good for cardiometabolic diseases, for insulin responses, for body fat, for gaining more brown fat. And if you have more brown fat, this means your adipose tissue is more metabolically active and more metabolically active tissue means you're losing fat easier. But the whole science behind that brown fat, white fat hypothesis is a little bit flawed and the impact of it is minuscule so I would not take that for granted and then we have the downsides of the ice bathing so first of all if you're a person that has heart problems that has cardiometabolic issues I would never use an ice bath ice bathing could lead to arrhythmia and there's many people that have already died from ice bathing so please always be careful there I know people will hate me and will say ice bathing is safe and it's just fear nope if you have legit heart issues please don't ice bath honestly now we come to the next thing Thing, and this is the biggest downside of ice bathing. As I explained to you, when you go in the ice bath, first you are afraid of it for a reason. It's a life or death experience. And if you go inside, you're extremely shocked. Your adrenals, your little stuff above your kidneys, it releases massive amounts of adrenaline and norepinephrine. And the problem with that is our society is already massively stressed. We are already Speaking with chronic stressors, we don't need additional acute stressors like ice bathing that push us completely over the top. Most people have cortisol levels that are chronically elevated. Most people have adrenaline levels that are chronically elevated. Most people do not sleep well and your body will not be able to really realize that this was supposed to be something positive for him. It will just be an additional massive acute stressor when you're in that ice bath. And now think about it. Why do you feel so amazing when you get out? Because your body just so survived a near-death experience. Your body just survived being thrown into the ice-cold water. If you were thrown in ice-cold water thousands, hundred thousand of years ago, that was the end of your life. So if you then come out in the modern times, your body is like, Phew. God damn, it feels so good that I'm still alive. Thank you for that. And it releases massive amounts of endorphins, just like surviving any other extreme situation. If you're going bungee jumping, you will have the exact same reaction. You will get that short term high. And honestly, and that's my personal opinion, and I'm free to discuss it with you, ice bathing, you're trading massive levels of stress and massive disruptions to your hormones to short levels of feeling good in a euphoria. And this is the second part. Most people have thyroid issues these days. Our thyroids are not the way they should be doing. They're not working properly anymore. Personally, I know way too many people that had to have their thyroid removed. I know way too many people that are hypothyroid, that are hyperthyroid. So in both extremes it goes. And these massive stress levels and overproduction of the adrenaline, this will further contribute to this thyroid issue. So if you're having issues in that regard, please also do not use the ice bathing and last but not least we have some reports of skin injuries of course if you're going deep in through the ice and your skin is kind of already hurt then this will hurt your skin but let's let's not talk about that the problem is that this ice bathing is promoted extremely well on these podcasts and people say it heals their life it changed their life forever they are suddenly a man now and this is part of this whole self-improvement bubble but to be honest it's also a growing multi-billion dollar industry like there's thousands of companies building ice baths now for crazy amounts of money it's just a bathtub for 500 bucks that they sell for thousand ten thousand bucks so to make some money so there's also an industry incentive behind it and there's also sponsors behind it when I started with the Uberman I think you remember what I meant take it all with a grain of salt you do not need to ice bath to be a man I can promise you that you do not need ice bath to recover from exercise there's other options me personally I'm a fanboy of saunas saunas have probably 100 times more actual research on people behind them than ice bathing saunas also not only improve heat shock proteins which reduces cancer and cardiometabolic diseases and depression by up to 80% but it also has the benefit of sweating and sweating is one of the most important things our society needs we need to sweat out all that stuff all all those toxins they come out through our skin our skin is our largest organ i'm a fanboy of sauna does it mean everybody has to do a sauna of course not if you like detoxing if you like the benefits of the sauna i can highly promote it and i hope that in one year we will get the social media trend of saunaing and posting pictures of your sauna or infrared sauna so what's the takeaway do your own research don't believe every fucking social media hype 
in one month we will get the new social media hype. I have seen social media hypes for the last 10 years. I have seen keto come and go. I have seen ice bathing now come and go. I have seen the weirdest methods and diets and things you could imagine from 30 bananas a day to being completely vegan, eating only meat. I've seen all the extremes and they all sell very well, but honestly, just listen to your own body and do what feels good to you. You don't need to do any of these extremes. Let me know if you have comments about ice bathing. If I upset you about ice bathing, please post it down in the comments below. I'm really curious to heat up some discussion with you about ice bathing. And now let's continue with the next social media fad. And that's the reason you understand that now. That's the reason why I put them together, because they're both extreme fads, extreme hypes on social media. The liver thing is just another anti what is normal. It's anti vegan. It's anti Mediterranean diet It's extremely extreme. It's the carnivore diet, but then one step further and then liver promoted as that magic ingredient that completely is able to cure everything. It's nature's multivitamin. We all should be taking liver supplements. So what the f is actually going on there? Let's elaborate a little bit. And just a disclaimer, I made a video about the carnivore diet not too long ago. So if you're curious about the carnivore diet and why I even did the carnivore diet, and I recommend it to some people, by the way. So disclaimer, I'm not an enemy of the carnivore diet, then please check out that video. But now we're talking about these beef liver supplements. And so this all started with these uh, carnivore influencers like Carnivore Aurelius, Carnivore MD, Salamimo MD, The Liver King, Sean Baker, and all these other uh, meat influencers, right? Meat influencers. And that's that's fine. I think it's cool that we have an anti-movement to the vegan diet. That's all right with me. But I think all of them actually, there's no exception. All of them sell raw liver supplements. And why do they sell them? Because liver is nutrient rich and arguably liver is really nutrient rich. Liver has humongous amounts of vitamin A, has really great amounts of vitamin B12, which are both vitamins we need. And it also has more minerals and antioxidants. And I think liver is a decent food to eat then and when. But liver is also the greatest source of toxins right? Like our body has a natural detoxification system. We have the lymphatic system. We have the kidney. We have the liver, of course, where also the bile is produced and the liver kind of all the enzymatic reactions, they all happen in the liver. So the liver already is always processing and playing around with all these toxins. And for most people, by the way, our liver is completely overstressed, overwhelmed and overburdened. So if you want to take charge of your life and if you want to detox your body, check out my website, detox-masterclass.com. You will also get permanent free access to my school community that is already with like 250 people or something. I have healed around 655 people with my masterclass these days. So please feel free to check it out. It's the science behind detoxing and you get a 10 day detox plan, which gets rid of parasites, gets rid of bugs, gets rid of bacteria, gets rid of viruses, gets rid of PFAS, microplastics, heavy metals. And I think those are the main toxins. And I also have a different guide that you also get for free. It shows you how to detox from fluoride. And it also shows you some alternative health options. If you're interested in improving your health, this is the way to go. So it's full of toxins. And not only that, but vitamin A also is dangerous for pregnant women. So if you're a pregnant woman, please do never take the beef liver supplements. It could be toxic for the baby. And furthermore, extremely high levels like found in the liver of vitamin B12 are associated in literature with heart attacks, with kidney disease and with rosacea. So if you have any of these issues, it might also be worth to not taking the liver supplement. And then liver also contains huge amounts of copper. And honestly, copper is one of those elements that humans should never take in a supplemental form. Copper is highly reactive and actually destroys our own liver, ironically. So because it accumulates in our liver. So again, another reason to kind of be more critical against those liver supplements. So the question raises, why should you take a liver supplement anyways? And if you're on a carnivore diet, and if you're already eating lots of meat and different kind of cuts of meat, and maybe even drinking bone broth, then the liver honestly is not the necessary supplement. It's just a great sales tactic. Again, you can eat liver then or when once or twice or three times a week with some sauteed onions. That's fantastic food, but it's just not necessary for being healthy. Honestly, in general, you don't need any supplements. If anybody sells you any supplements, even if I sell you any supplements, you don't need them. You should not buy supplements. If somebody tells you to get supplements, what are supplements for supplements are if you have a deficiency, if you have a problem that you want to be solved, that you cannot solve with your natural diet and food and herbs, then you can think about supplementing besides some outliers, which is like magnesium, everybody 
everybody is magnesium deficient. We have a massive pandemic of magnesium deficiency. So if you're in that kind, then it makes sense. And vitamin D the same because we're never out in the sun. I'm sitting in hellhole Berlin here and there is no sun around. So for those specific reasons, it makes sense to supplement, but just randomly supplementing. So you have all the supplements. That's not a good idea. Now we come to the conclusion. Those both are social media hypes and trends of 2023 and they will be in 2024 until we find the next trend. We had the bulletproof coffee 10 years ago. We had intermittent fasting. These trends will never stop. There will always be something extreme. We also have the animal based diet now popping up. There will also be more popular in my opinion. And this is a trend I like. Some trends are cool. Some trends are bad. Always be careful with these hypes. Don't just fall for them. Try to make your own opinion. Do some own research on it and don't just blindly believe people like a fanboy. The whole takeaway, I believe social media will destroy humanity and it will completely us up majorly. And these extreme claims and trends and believing people to the T, that will be one of the main issues we fall. This is my take on ice bathing and on raw liver supplements. And this is also my take on what connects them. And now I want to just thank you for listening. I appreciate every comment. I appreciate every like and please follow this video. If you didn't already, the channel is really worth subscribing. I have many plans this year and I'm going to take you on a whole journey. Thank you very much. Out.